Hello and welcome to our video on email configuration in Tracket. In this video we're going to talk about how to set up the email accounts for the new Tracket system as far as inbound and outbound communications. In the videos on business rules we talk about configuring some of the rules to handle different email situations. Here we're going to actually show you how to configure the inbound and outbound accounts that the Tracket system will use to process email. So click on my menu, select configuration. I'm going to look here under email configuration. First thing I'm going to do is set up incoming and outgoing emails. So here, you click on New under your Incoming Emails section, and you'll get a dialog that looks like this. You want to select your email type, whether it's POP or IMAP. In our particular case, we selected IMAP. We put in the IMAP server address here. We put in our account name and password. And then we set up the port that Gmail uses for inbound IMAP email, which is 993. If you're using a different email provider, this might be different. Gmail also requires SSL, so we have that turned on here as well. There's also a test connection button that allows you to test your setup. You should get a message that says your connection is successful. Once this is all set up, you can save that and you'll see all the settings for your account right here. If you want to add other email accounts here as well, you can go ahead and do that because Trackit will check multiple email boxes for inbound emails. For outbound email, we're going to refer to this section down here at the bottom. When you come in to track it for the very first time, all of these settings down here below are, are, of course, going to be blank. And you will click on this Configure button to open up the configuration for your outbound email. You only need one single account for outbound email, and all outbound email from track it will be routed out through that account. So once you configure that account, you'll see your settings here in this little summary screen at the bottom. So if you click Configure, you'll get the outgoing email configuration screen. And here you're gonna set up your SMTP server information. So your server name and your port, security type, and the account information and all of that stuff. If you're not sure what this is, you're probably gonna to need to ask your network administrator or uh, an email administrator at your company to find out uh, what information you need to put in here to make this work. And then you're gonna also need to include a from address that you want all the emails from Trackit to have as the uh, address they were sent from. And so when an email goes out from Trackit using these settings, this email address at the bottom, the from address, will be the from address of the email. So when the person who gets the email responds back, this is the email address it'll come back to. So usually you're going to want to use the exact same from address here as your help desk email address so that all your communications into and out of Trackit work smoothly. Once you have all these settings in here, you can click send test email if you want to test it out. You can type in an email address here and hit OK. The system will go ahead and try to send that email. And if all your settings are correct, then you'll get a successful send message here at the end. So we'll go ahead and cancel out of here. And a summary of these outbound email settings can be found right here at the bottom of the page. That's it for configuring your inbound and outbound email accounts. The next thing you might want to look at under email is email filters. I'll go ahead and select that. These are some built-in email rules that will filter out certain emails from being processed. So there are rules for the sender and rules for the subject. So here for the sender, if it's from Postmaster or Mail Delivery Subsystem or one of these types of things, it's probably an undeliverable email that got bounced back. It's probably something that Trackit sent out and went to an invalid address and it can't be processed. So you can add things to this or remove them from here, however you see fit. As far as subjects, you can do the same thing. There are a variety of messages in here that we've put in by default, but you can remove or add to these as necessary. It's very simple. You just click in there, hit enter, and type the new value. There's one more filter option we have here, and that is filtering inbound email by only accepting email from, and here are your options. We have the default, which is process everything. So no matter who sends it in, we're going to process it and run it through the email business rules. You could say you don't want to process any emails into Trackit unless the requester exists in Trackit. You could say you only want to process email if the technician exists in Trackit. Or you could say you only want to process emails from people who are requesters or technicians in Trackit. It's just up to you how you want to configure your system. By default, Trackit will read every email that comes in if it looks like it's a valid email and not a bounced or undeliverable message, it'll go ahead and process it. Now we're going to go back. 
And the last thing we want to look at real quickly here under email settings is email monitor settings. The defaults here should be fine for just about all Trackit customers. There's a stop button here, which stops your email monitor service and restarts it. You will notice that when you create a new email account, the system will tell you you should stop this service and restart it. This is where you would do that. Some advanced settings for your email processing are your response URL and your self-service response URL. When Trackit includes a link back to the system in an email, these are the URLs that will be included in those emails. So if Trackit fires out an email to a technician for Trackit, this is the URL it will include in that email. And if Trackit sends an email to an end user requester who's logged a ticket, this is the URL back to the self-service portal that will be included. There is an option to enable event logging here as well. If you turn this on, then email events will be logged in a log here on the server. You shouldn't have to change the polling interval or the emails to process or anything like that unless tech support or someone else uh, here at BMC recommends you change that setting. So now we're going to go ahead and go back. The last thing we want to look at here, which you covered a little bit in the business rules video, is which business rules to turn on to make sure these emails are getting processed. So we're going to click on SLAs and business rules, and we're going to click on the business rules button. You want to look for one here that says create new ticket via email with any subject. This is a generic rule that is going to create a ticket in the Trackit system no matter what is in the subject. Now keep in mind, this is after it's already been through the email monitor filters of undeliverable and bounced mail and things like that. So it's going to go ahead and read that email and it's going to create a ticket for it. Mine is already enabled, but I'll show you how I did that. Since it's a canned business rule, you can't actually modify it. If I double click this and open it up, you'll notice that the save button is disabled. So even if I check an option here, save is still disabled. So for a system rule, like the ones we provide here, if you want to enable it, you just select the row, click the actions menu here, and click on activate selected rule. I can also deactivate from here if I'd like by just selecting deactivate. And now notice I have activate is the selected option. Now, if there are things in this system rule that you don't like, you can actually deactivate this one, and then you can click on the actions menu and say copy, create a new rule based on this one, and then modify it to your liking. As far as just a canned setup, if you want to just enable some rules to get started and then see how things go and modify them later, what we would recommend is enabling this create new ticket via email with any subject, close ticket via email, close assignment via email, get ticket information via email, and possibly update ticket via email. A lot of these other rules that you'll see in here that we have by default, these are meant to notify requesters or technicians if a ticket is changed in a certain way. So for example, this one here notifies a requester if the status of their ticket changes. You can turn these on as well. Just be careful because you don't want to generate 25 emails to a user every time something happens in the system. So a lot of these are put in here as examples. You can use them as templates. You can copy them and then create your own custom rules. If you're just trying to get started with a basic setup, you really just want to enable this one right here, create new ticket via email with any subject, and that'll get you started. Then you can play around with some of these other business rules when you have time. The last thing I'll mention here is to keep in mind that when somebody sends in an email to the system and track it tries to create a ticket out of it, it looks at the email address that that email came from and tries to match it up with the requester from the requester table. So we'll go back real quickly and just take a look under all settings, under requesters. These are your users in your system. So if you look at one of the users and you see the email address they have there, if an email comes in from that email address, then Trackit is going to be able to find this requester and link that ticket up with this requester in the help desk. So this has been an overview of how to configure email in Trackit. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner inside Trackit. Some other useful resources are the Trackit community, where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.